on this episode of Peak. Modern Customs Founded in Ancient Superstition Many of the customs in Western culture are so deeply ingrained in us and are so ubiquitous that we rarely, if ever, stop to wonder where they came from and why we do them. You may be surprised to know that there are a lot of things we do today that originated from the superstitions of people who lived a thousand years ago or more. For example, throwing coins into a well or fountain. Since the dawn of time, water has been mankind's most precious resource. That's why cultures all over the world have long considered springs, rivers, and rain to be gifts from the gods. As an offering to deities and water spirits, and to ask for fortune and fertility, early European tribes left small statues and Roman coins in and around water sources. In medieval times, when Christianity dominated Europe, sacred springs became associated with saints and healing waters. Visitors would throw in coins and bent pins and ask for cures and blessings. This practice is still around today. Visit your local shopping mall and stop by the fountain to see pennies left as an offering to the retail gods. Hanging Wind Chimes the first wind chimes were bronze and were made by ancient Romans. Referred to as tintinabulum, the chimes were hung in gardens and porticos, like these, where the wind would blow them and make sound. The Romans believed that the tinkling of bells would ward off malevolent spirits. Okay, now brace yourself for this next part. Tintinabulum were also adorned with phallic imagery that served as good luck symbols as seen here. Boy, that's really something, ain't it? Trust me when I say that these are the mildest photos of ancient Roman tintinabulum that I could find on the internet. The ancient Romans really appreciated a phallus. Anyhow, wind chimes also served the same purpose in later centuries in India, China, and Japan, scaring away evil spirits, as well as birds, from temples, palaces, and private homes. Kissing under a mistletoe. In Norse mythology, mistletoe was associated with the love goddess Frigga. Kissing under the plant was encouraged, with the kissers removing one berry from the plant for each kiss. Once the berries were all gone, the makeout session was over. Tough luck, Bjorn. For Saxons, mistletoe was hung over doors or placed on hearths as a promise that the host would not kill his guests even if they were his enemies. This oath was often made during celebrations and great holiday feasts. Speaking of mortal enemies, your Christmas tree hates your mistletoe. That's because mistletoe is the vampire of the plant world, attaching itself to evergreen trees and shrubs and sucking away water and nutrients until the plant is disfigured or dead. Merry Christmas to you. Crossing your fingers. The act of crossing one's fingers dates back to the early days of Christianity. As an appeal to God for protection, Christians would overlap their fingers to signify the cross. During the Roman persecution of Christians, this sign also became a way for Christians to identify one another and to assemble in secret. Later, the gesture evolved to include the act of crossing your fingers while lying. The crossed fingers were thought to be a safeguard for being sent to hell for committing a sin. Wishing on a wishbone. Next time you wrestle family members over a magical bird clavicle, thank the Etruscans for your holiday fun. They played with bird bones before it was cool. The Etruscans believed that chickens could predict the future. They performed a ritual called electreomancy, or rooster divination. In this ritual, a chicken would be placed in the center of a circle, divided into segments, with Etruscan letters marking each segment. Food would be sprinkled across the circle. As the chicken moved around the circle, the priest recorded the letters and interpreted the messages that the chickens were giving them. You know, messages about the future, wink wink. Unfortunately for Etruscan chickens, their deliciousness was prized even above their fortune-telling powers and their bodies made predictions even after their drumsticks had turned a crispy golden brown. When a chicken was killed, its wishbone was laid out in the sun to dry. Visitors could pick up the bone, rub it, and make wishes on it. 
Romans, who picked up many Etruscan customs over the years, were psyched about rooster divination, and before long it became so popular that there weren't enough wishbones to go around. The magical bones were then broken into pieces to allow more people to rub them and kiss them and do whatever else those depraved ancient Romans did. Hey, you saw the penis wind chimes. Romans then brought this tradition to all the regions they conquered. Along with centaurs. Just kidding, that's not true. Knocking on wood. This practice is thought to have originated in early Germanic culture. Knocking on trees would wake or summon the tree spirits, fairies, or dryads living inside the tree and invoke their magical protection. Boasting or showing happiness about your circumstances could breed jealousy or resentment in people around you, or rouse demons whose purpose was to screw with happy people. But with a quick knock, those handy dryads had your back. Spirits or no spirits, trees are sacred in many ancient and modern cultures, including Norse, Celtic, Indian, Nigerian, and Mongolian culture, and in religious faiths such as Buddhism and Shintoism. The reasons why are fairly obvious. Trees can grow to incredible sizes. They can live for centuries. They creak and groan in eerie ways. They provide shelter, food, wood for building things, and some tree bark and leaves have medicinal properties. Plus, they're so darn pretty. And don't get me started on that nice rustly leaf sound. <sighs> so with trees being so useful, it's no surprise that people associated them with mystical powers of protection. Wow, this has been an exciting video. I'm sure everyone will favorite it and then subscribe to this channel. Knock wood. To learn about other ancient superstitions, view the references in the description box of this video. Thanks for watching Peek! If I piqued your interest, like or favorite this video, or subscribe to this channel to further cure your curiosities.